Um, so, all right, let's go ahead and start the meeting at 6.34. Um, ooh, we got a little bell. Sorry. Too. Sorry. <laughs> it's not great. You should do that every time. Yay! Let's start the meeting. <laughs> um, Zach liked it. So, at 6.34, first order of business is public comment. I don't see anyone in the room, and I don't see anyone online who looks like they're from the public. So, um, so we can move to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I anyone? Do we approve the consent agenda? Do I have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Great. Um, second, Merrick, uh, student update, please. I'm on it. Hold on. All right. So Zach's going to start us off with the agenda, and then we'll alternate from there. Yep. Um, so this is our agenda. Um, we're going to start with uh, a public statement from the representatives. Um, then we're going to go to our normal current events at NHS. Um, we're going to talk about some feedback um, that we've gotten over the year, but with like a, a positive spin on it. Um, and then we have our updates and our closing. That is our agenda. Alrighty, so yeah, just as Zach mentioned, we thought that we would put together a, a statement regarding recent events, so I'll go ahead and read that to the public and the school board now. So, the wave of gun violence and associated threats over the past months and years is appalling. It is incredibly frustrating for our community and just our wider nation world to continue for these events that, and tragedies to continue occurring. And in the wake of these recent events, we think it is crucial that we are conscientious as a community, both on what we notice and how others feel. Our schools should not be a target nor a place where anyone feels unsafe. Our school community should not be one where students or staff feel nervous being a part of. And there is nothing funny about so-called jokes. There is nothing funny about anything said that makes others feel uncomfortable. There comes a time when we as a community really have to come forward and recognize what is wrong. And we commend those students and staff who came forward at Montpelier High School over the past week. These are difficult times, and we believe that we really need to start asking ourselves what more can and should we be doing to stop these tragedies from occurring again and again? How much more harm needs to be done before we take action on what we universally condemn? So thank you for listening. Uh, now on to some current events, other current events, I guess, in our community. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mary, for reading that, and thank you, the board, for listening. Um, our upcoming events are the MHS concert, um, which is tomorrow at 7 p.m., um, and it's a joint concert between orchestra, chorus, and band. That's going to be lots of fun, and you should go. <laughs> Um, and coming up really soon is graduation on June 10th. So our, our seniors right now are about to leave us for their next, their next steps in life. So it's really exciting and also kind of sad. And then another thing, uh, June 1st is the beginning of Pride Month across the world. Um, and that Pride Month commemorates uh, the LGBTQ pluses community um, and the past and present uh, fight for freedom and equal rights. And here are some different events that are happening in Montpelier that you should also go to because there'll be lots of fun. And then, so as, as Zach mentioned, we often bring a lot of negative things that we hear, just some of the bad news. But we thought as we close this year, we would end it with some of the things that students really appreciated with MHS and our wider community. Um, so at MHS specifically, I was getting a little ahead of myself, but people really appreciated having a morning break. That was a really nice time for people to get a bagel, get some food just in the cafeteria, or just hang out for a minute before their next classes. So uh, I think that a lot of students at MHS in particular would really love to see 
that or something similar next year. And then something else that I, I say, and I'm sure many other students say as they've come through their M, MRPS experience over the years is that our community is a very welcoming one. And I think that's, that's a really strong part of Montpelier. And yeah. And then, this is something specific for me, but I thought I would give a shout out to my English teacher, DMA. There was one summative recently where it, we were, our class was doing essays, but me and another student, we thought that it would be interesting to do something different. So what we did was we did a little podcast instead, which I thought was kind of in your, in your spirit, Libby, but yeah. We thought, you will get to me to put on our social media site, right? I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you if you want. It's, it's, I think it's 11 minutes, so it was kind of long. But Along with your movie that you made in another that was, DMA That class. was only four minutes, yeah. That, so I'm going to interrupt Merrick for okay, a second. Go ahead. And DMA has a film class that they did their first annual film festival, right? It was the first ever, I think. Yeah. First one I've ever been invited to. And students in the class showed their very short videos. And I have to say that Merrick and his peers <laughs> was quite funny um, and lovely. And some of them were awesome, and some of them were thought provoking, and some of them were just funny. So we're working with DMA to get those up on our website as well, because they were awesome. awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. I thought that was, I thought that was just so, so cool and it's so different from the normal tests and summatives that we really yeah, do all the cool. time. So I thought that was really a breath of fresh air. But this was for, um, DMA's other English class that is also available to juniors. And yeah, we did a podcast and it was just really fun. And a little break from doing traditional essays all the time, which cool. I think me and the other student who did it really, really liked a lot. And then, yeah, just some other things that I think students across the district and particularly in the high school really enjoyed, enjoyed this past year was having more choices, I think, this year in particular with some project-based things such as the film and such as that alternative summit that I just talked about. And also something that I know students really enjoyed was having free lunches, free meals. This was, like, I, I just know a lot more students were able to get access to school lunches here, and I thought that was really, a really positive. And yeah, just all of our teachers, custodial staff, and administrators, we thought that we really appreciate them, and we thought we'd give them a shout out in our presentation. So thank, thank all of you. And yeah, that was just some of the things that we talked about this year. And then for our closing and our updates, um, some updates on our curriculum discussions that we've been having with Mike Berry. Um, we discussed the proficiency system in MHS and how it's implemented right now. Um, and then we're looking into polling graduated seniors to see just to get like feedback from them and see what they wish they learned, what they thought was really useful, a bunch of different stuff to sort of gauge how they felt prepared for college. And then, yeah, looking ahead, we're hoping to, especially next, next year or the year after so forth, looking to really help guide future student school board representatives just like in that beginning stages of like, what are they, what should they be doing? How can they engage with their community? And just also certainly these presentations that I think that future student representatives should also do. Um, yeah, so just maybe kind of defining that a little bit more for them and certainly working with the next student representatives to um, just like make sure that they're the best ones that they can be. And also looking ahead as we close off this year, we're going to consider meeting with Mike Barry and other administrators to think about our curriculum and our instruction next year and beyond. So that was our presentation for today. So thank you all. If you have any questions. Yeah. One of the slides you had, you only bring bad news. Yeah. I don't, maybe I'm off base, but we don't see that as bad news. We see that as good feedback from the students. So at least I appreciate that. I, we, I don't. I at least don't think that hearing from students and, and hearing what the pain points are or where you think uh, attention should be given uh, is a bad news. Well, that's all. Yeah. Thank you for that. I just think that 
it's certainly nice to also bring us. Oh no, I, I certainly appreciated the, the thought. I just wanted to point that out. Though. Yeah, if you, you thought that way, it's we don't at least think that. Yeah. that it's, it's yeah, absolutely. Does the board have a mechanism for documenting the presentations? Or is it just in the recording of the entire thing? Are the actual files somewhere? They're all. They sh I have them up, but they should be all up with the board board materials each week. That gets archived on our website. Okay. Usually we, um, we usually we don't get them in the board packet in time. I don't think we have so far. So I, I don't know. But if Anna will put them up post, afterwards. Post. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I appreciate all the work. Thank you. I really has been a breath of fresh air to just hear that it's not just that, that you're getting feedback from everybody. So I really appreciate all your work. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, right. no, this has been super helpful. Thank you. Do we have you for one more meeting, at least? Yeah, for sure. And yeah. I'm, I'm sure me and Zach are totally on board to help guide the new administration next year as well. I think that's something we really want to help out with. Great. Yeah. Excellent. I don't find the agendas and minutes very easily on the website. Like, I see, click a lot of, board, of agenda buttons, and they come back to the same page that says school board agendas and minutes. It has meeting videos in 2022, videos for 2021, agendas and docs for 2020, but 2021 isn't there. Because I have kind of. Are the school board page of the website? Yeah, but the website. I mean,. Strangely, I only see meeting videos on there. Yeah, that must be something. Okay, <laughs> I can point it out to Anna. I don't think we need to take time with it now. No, I'm sorry. But I can point it out to Anna, who runs this stuff. It was a couple of hours ago. <laughs> yeah, no, we can definitely. Make that more accessible. Thanks for pointing that out, Red. Um, all right. The next item. Any further questions from Mike or, or from Eric or Zach? No. Um, next item is budget proposals. Is budget proposals. Um, do you want to give mm -hmm. a brief? overview of, I know it was explained in the materials, of what, what you're looking yeah. for. So the, um, I would recommend to the board to approve a side letter that's in, that was in your packet to add two additional days to the MRESSA employee negotiate agreement. MRESSA is our instructional assistance. Um, and they, um, I'll give you just a, a brief history that is probably more information than you actually need to make this decision, but <laughs> may be helpful. Um, about five or six years ago, MR, before the merger, Montpelier schools had two days of in-service prior to school starting. And the way that that worked was one of those days was a school-based day and one of those days was a district-based day where, you know, the superintendent got on stage and did a rah-rah speech and all that kind of stuff to welcome people back and had a breakfast and all of that kind of thing. Um, two days is not enough time for before school in-service. so. Um, we changed the calendar, so we moved more in-service days to the beginning of the year for teachers. So now we have four. Um, well, we have three, with one of them being a parent conference to make it four um, prior to the school year. And when that change happened, there was um, the Lala day with everybody here in one place having breakfast together and with me on stage talking to people. Typically happens on the first day that everybody comes back. And then there were three more days after that. 
and instructional assistants are assigned to be here for one of those. So we made the executive decision to have them come on the day that was most beneficial to them, which would be when they're talking about students without APs and making plans and with classroom teachers talking about students because that's their primary job responsibility. However, that, that created a situation where instructional assistants were not feeling included in our district-wide climate because they weren't part of the district-wide, what they perceive as to be a celebration in the beginning of the year. So the only real way to, to fix that <laughs> is to add more days onto their, into their negotiated agreement. Um, so through several conversations with the union leadership and myself, um, we came to this side letter to ask for two additional days. The monetary amount that it would cost the district to do this is about $12,000. Um, and it would be considerable goodwill as well in order for this to happen. So the instructional assistants will be able to come to that day where we're celebrating coming back together and be a part of the conversations about kids that are important to their work and being successful in their work. So my recommendation is to approve that side letter to a cost of approximately $12,000 extra dollars that was not um, kind of we're in the budget process for FY23, so it would be an addition to that, to the budgetary amount for that, and I think it would be very well spent. Okay. Amanda? Is that from the fund balance, the $12,000? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on if we can hire all the IAs or not, <laughs> which we haven't been able to in three years' time, so maybe, maybe not. Um, if, if we are fully staffed, then yes, it would come out of fund balance. If we are not fully staffed, then it would, it's just part of the salary line that we typically don't overspend on anyway. Okay. Other questions? Joe? Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just wondering if um, it looks like the, their representative president would be able to sign on their behalf. Are you expecting any pushback from? No, so the process how these kind of things go is that it's the union president's responsibility to go get feelings from the membership, which Joyce and Corey did. Um, and there were some who were like, no, we don't want to start at work earlier. Um, but the vast majority of them have said, yes, we want to do that. Um, there was a lot of misunderstanding as to why um, they weren't there on that day. You know, so we can't get around the contracted issues. Like, they are only contracted to work a certain amount of days. Right, and so that, so adding days alleviates that for them. So I think the large majority of them wish to be there, and according to Joyce and Corey. How many people are we talking about? I mean, approximately. I'm just wondering we have say. approximately 30 okay. IAs across the district. Thank you. Okay, did you want to? I was just wondering if you, and if you don't have the answer, that's okay. But do you know last few years the salary line has it come consistently under? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you know how much? I don't know how much okay. exactly, but I do know it's been under because we haven't been fully staffed. Yeah, that's what I figured since COVID. It's, yeah. it's probably going to be in town. Yeah. Um, but before COVID, has it been low or? Well, that was only one year of my tenure. <laughs> <laughs> so. I believe my Same first side. year we were fully staffed, but I, that, I'm not positive. Okay. I don't remember it being a struggle to cover for coverage that year. Okay. Well, is that true? And, well, who knows? I mean, it was four years ago. Who knows? <laughs> no, <laughs> so is it true that only one year of your tenure has been yeah. non-COVID? That's yeah. crazy. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. Other questions? So this is for the beginning of next year. Is it going to be rolled into the budget for the year after that? Or? Yeah, that's a really good question, Sagey. So typically what happens with side letters, next year's a negotiation year for this particular union. So typically what happens with side letters is the parties have already agreed on that language for the contract. So therefore it just gets rolled into the next year's contract and it will get rolled into next year's budget. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it will, it will just become, if you approve a side letter, then it just basically becomes part of the side the contract unless it specifically says this is only for this school year, which this this does not. Can I make a motion? Yes, yeah. you may make a motion. Please do. I make a motion to approve the side letter. The side letter. <laughs> for the additional days. <laughs> <laughs> to to add two additional days to instructional assistance. Okay. You have a second? I'll second it. Any further discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Passes. All right. I'll have Anna send that to you to sign. Yeah, sure, the one who needs to sign it. Um, the second piece on there is we've been, um, as the board is well aware, that we've had some substitute teacher shortages across this school year. And we, like many other districts, are recommending the hire of some permanent substitute teachers for the 2022-2023 school year. So I wrote up an, uh, a recommendation for you that was in your board packet. I'm happy to answer any questions about that. The, the skinny is basically that we would be looking to hire, we may not be able to hire, but we would be looking to hire four permanent substitute teachers, technically one for each school. However, if there's not a need for a substitute, let's say in Union Elementary School, who has quite a bit of subs um, and doesn't typically have a sub shortage, that that person would either pick up work that needs to be done at Union because there's always something that needs to be done at a school, or if there's a greater need in a different school building than that at MSMS, let's say, then that makes two subs available at MSMS for coverage purposes. Um, it's just something that the principals can rely on. Currently, the principals are spending 45 minutes to an hour each day. That's how they start their day, finding coverage for their classrooms. Um, so it would give them back that time. Um, we'd have people we can rely on. We would write, and it would be under an MOU, not under one of our union contracts, but under a memorandum of understanding that would provide health care because we would have to under the ACA law. Um, and it would also give them sick benefits and all that kind of stuff. We made the salary range based on what we pay a typical substitute teacher for a day if they have no experience in our, or no licensure. So that starts at $125 a day. So we just basically multiply it by 178 student days to get the low end. And then the high end is the, what we pay a long-term substitute who does have to be licensed by law. Um, to cover like a family leave or something like that. That's how we got the high end. So we made a range for ourselves so we could base the salary that we offer on experience with substitution or teaching in general or experience in our district as well as licensure status. Um, so we kind of had that freedom and wiggle room. So the high number, while it's kind of eye popping at $166,000 or something like that, it wouldn't be $166,000. That that's just the high end. If we got four permanent substitutes, all who are licensed and have experience teaching, that would be, which is kind of a wish list. Yeah. <laughs> that that's just the, the, the end range. Um, we don't expect that. We don't generally use our entire budgeted line for substitutes, which is around $131,000. Um, we certainly haven't this year, although teachers are covering for other teachers, so that comes out of the substitute budget right now. Um, so our plan would be that we'd hire, see what we are going to pay them based on licensure status and experience, pay out, use the substitute line first, and when that gets used up or when that gets zeroed out, then we would um, use the fund balance in order to cover the rest of the the balance. Um, we, we can't anticipate how much that might be because this is so new to us. So it would definitely be a pilot year for this system. Um, but we think it may, even if we can get two, it would alleviate some of the burden that we have right now in finding guest yeah. teachers for our classrooms. But I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have after that recommendation that was in the board packet. I have two. The first one is how often are you are able to foresee need so that it's not like a, um, so that the principal has an idea of what the need might look like next week, or is it usually like a day of thing? Yes, and. Yes, and. So it's in ReadySub. We, yeah. we contract with ReadySub, which is a software company. And so I can go on and see the absences for, that are in the system right now for each day next week. but. Who knows when your kiddos get, as you well know with small twins, right? Yeah, your kids yeah. could get sick at four in the morning and you gotta figure it out. But, so does it seem like the, these roles might be into some of the, these are the high priority needs of those principles that we can see are, are coming up in a way that allows that, that flexibility. You yeah. Know, if you have somebody that you can count on, 
um, yeah, right. that knows your building, knows your culture, maybe you want to prioritize where you want to put them. Yep. And if that is a possibility, that seems We could certainly do that. Yeah. Um, I think it, I would leave it up to the principals to make their best discretion right. as to how to do that. Typically, this, the classrooms, particularly at MHS and UES, um, classroom substitutes that are the substitutes that are in there, the, the job openings that are in ready sub for you know a week or two in advance, those in a typical year get picked up, where there's not a whole lot of trouble with substitutions. The the challenges come more for RBS and. Um, MSMS. We have very few subs for our middle schoolers. That's kind of shocking. The second, it kind of leads into the second question: is the possibility of moving between buildings? Is that something that is in any contract right now? As far as going as far as RBS, is RBS? Are there is there any precedent for any staff going to or from RBS? Yes. A little bit. Yes, there is. We so, moved an instructional assistant from Union Elementary School to RBS a couple of years ago. It's, a, in, it's an involuntary transfer. Yeah, so in the, our contracts, we have language around involuntary transfers or just transfers in general. Because it, being such a small school, one-fourth of this, well, I want there to be more people in there to provide the highest quality education possible. I also recognize that having that availability across the district, not necessarily just tacked to a building, is more valuable to the district. Yeah, and, and quite, I put in for four because it's my wish list, right? So you all can say, no, we're, we're, go for two or go for three, and that's fine. Um, I don't think we'll be able to hire four. I think that's wishful thinking right now. Um, and so if we can hire two, then we will make a judgment call as to where those two need to go. It might be that they report to central office every morning and we send them out to the place that has the most need. Um, but this is so new in a pilot that... I'm not positive as to the answers right now. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think it's a great idea um, and a good example of, you know, trying something that we've never done before to um, address the challenges that you're facing. Um, and I, I'll say I really like the idea of this of them being sort of assigned to a school because I felt like they could really get um, into the to the school culture and really know mm -hmm. um, the, their, the, their fellow teachers and the students. But I also understand that really the purpose of this is to fill the gaps. So I understand why you would maybe have somebody be between schools. Um, I would, I'm, uh, I'm pretty surprised that the substitute line in the budget is only $131,000 for a whole year. Um, do we usually, not spend all that, that's, oh. yeah. Yeah. Um, we usually it, don't have a challenge with subs, like in a, yeah. in even the first two years, so the first year and a half when it wasn't COVID, yes. um, we, didn't have a, we didn't have a challenge with substitutes. We had plenty of substitutes. Right, right. A Main Street Middle School is the one that was always like, but we never had people covering each other's classrooms. Like, this is new right. now. No, but but then, we, then you would think that we would spend all that money because we would have, we would be paying the subs that we'd be. Yeah, if teacher, but teachers may not take all their time either. Yeah. yeah. You know? I think that's one of the impetuses for the challenge this year is that because things like surgeries and doctor's appointments, and th yeah. that was all put off for yeah. a year and a half. And so people could now get into those things, you know. We had more surgeries this year than I think we've ever had in the past four years, but mm -hmm. I, because I think people were told to hold off right. and then it got scheduled this year. You know, so I think this year may be an anomaly, anomaly but I'm not willing to take that bet and go right. through this again next year. Right. If we can try to, if we can try to alleviate it a right. little bit. So what was the, rat, the, or like the thinking behind not having this be a teacher position that is in the contract? Because we don't have any language in the contract that that goes with this, so we talked about we talked about it being adding on to an instructional assistance staff, um, and then we decided, you know, Heather Michaud and I, who's our human resources coordinator, mm -hmm. think it's just it's just the easiest and cleanest to have 178 days because then you're not worried about like let's say that the need is at MSMS. 
we don't even need an MHS, we don't even really need at UAS, and we don't even need an RVS, then I don't need to go through the emergency reassignment role that I would have to if it was part of the teacher contract. Oh, I see. Um, but we just say, you're, you know, if it's clear in the MOU that if there's a need in another building and not a need in the building you're assigned to, you will move to, the, like, they're, they're signing that knowing, knowing that expectation. Um, it just makes it a little bit cleaner and a little bit um, less hurdles to jump through. Yep. And then you're saying they'll have this salary, somewhere in that range, health benefits and pay time off. Are there any other um, benefits that teachers get that we should consider offering to them to have it be like? They get, they get dental package? too. They get dental, okay. health. Um, the vision, they, they get access to all of that kind of piece uh -huh. with the, and the paid time off. I think those are the biggies uh -huh. that and people would look for. Got it. And then if, if we did actually have, happen to get four at the top of the, you know, market or whatever, plus health insurance actually would be more than Yeah, it would be. Yeah. yeah. But that's highly unlikely. Right. Is what you're saying. <laughs> yes. Um, and then I just had one other question, and then I'll be done, um, which is professional development. Would they be able to participate in those days with teachers, or this is really just? This is just 178 student days. Okay. So anybody who works with us, who works, who doesn't work like those days, we'd never say, no, you can't come. We, we'd, there would just be an agreement that you're not being paid for those, that time. There, there isn't an expectation for you to come to those times, but you're more than welcome to join us. Yeah. Could we include that? Like how many more days would that be if we included that and paid them for it? Teachers work 185 days. So seven. Well, 188 days, sorry. Seven. Oh, so 10 more days. Yeah. Uh -huh. I would be willing to ha have that be part of the MOU and, and, and encourage them to join in that professional development um, by paying them for showing up because um, the, the one reason that's coming to mind is that um, we, you know, in sort of little anecdotal spaces or stories that we've been hearing, it's um, felt like it's pretty much everybody in the school building who could use whatever professional development teachers are getting. I mean, maybe not like instructional, but I'm thinking more about the social, emotional, and behavioral stuff that, um, you know, I've heard I've heard like it would be great if our cafeteria workers could get that, and our, and I know that's not what we're talking about here. But if we're talking about somebody who's going to be in a classroom every single day, it feels really useful that they would be offered that as a part of the MOU. So I'd say that is the purview of the board to decide on. <laughs> Amanda. I totally agree with me around that. I would love to see that, especially because they're permanent positions. I would also love to have the dream of four substitutes each for each each building because of the culture and like the need you jump from thing to thing and if you know the building well and you know the staff. Um, so I, I, I really, I wonder if there's also an opportunity to think like long term, like how we can, in terms of like thinking of teaching shortages for the future, like how we could think about a path for these substitute teachers to like look at opportunities to get licensed in the case that we were to get like the bottom line or if there is opportunities for, you know, would there be opportunities for people already in staff that want to go into those positions since they offer healthcare and like, I don't know if like everybody gets healthcare. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so like if there was like that transition from like food staff to the substitute position, just like, thinking of all the opportunities we could get. And I, I think it's great. I, I, will, I really would support four positions plus in addition to the days for professional development for them to be able to get paid for that. That has been kind of like a disparity of that we should think about. Perfect. Yeah, I also agree with you, Nina and Amanda. I think that just based on everything that me and Zach have heard from over the past few months with students, I think it would be really great to encourage that professional development among anyone that is going to be teaching in a classroom, I think. Did you? Yeah, I agree with, with what's been said. I think that extra 10 days would be good to make it feel like one team as opposed to two different teams. Um, almost like just including the IAs for the extra two days, it's sort of the same, same thinking. 
Um, and I happened to be speaking about this with a high school teacher over the weekend, and we, we said, why don't we have permanent subs? Said, that's, that's a great idea. So <laughs> we were talking about it, and then and I read your email. We can go back to the teacher and be like, done. Yeah. I, did, I got a song for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, my question was practical, which is who would apply for this position, and are there going to be people? Because I know that, you know, it's, it's a yeah. It's it's a good market for teachers. So it seems like a lot of yeah. aspiring teachers are probably going to get actual teacher positions, and the salary might be somewhat low given the time commitment for say a semi-retired teacher who you know, might want to come back for a yeah. year or two and supplement income. So. Yeah, I think there's two audiences. There's one audience who I just you know a, a person who I have we have a common friend sent me her resume today who wants to get into teaching but doesn't have any of the licensure or education. Like she's been an outdoor educator, right? Um, she's, she works for Outward Bound or something like that. And we've actually had a few of those who technically in Vermont standards are not qualified for a license, right? Um, but they, they've taught in a different scenario and, they, and so this gives them experience yeah. and they could, and if they're on a, a year-long salary, they could use it for their experience and transfer review kind of transfer yeah. review kind of thing. So there's one audience, small, but it's there. It is there. Um, and then the other is um, people like there is one person in our community who's a phenomenal sub. He was an IA for us. Doesn't want to be an IA. He doesn't want to be attached to a kid. He doesn't. He doesn't want that type of responsibility and, and didn't enjoy that work specifically. However, he has said to me, if you just had a permanent sub, I'd, I'd do that. Yeah. You know, and he happens to, this, this particular person has to be an artist, you know, and has other side gigs kind of thing. Um, and a substitute has very low demand, right? Outside Except for your time every day. Class, yeah. yeah, exactly. And you can, you can attack your side gig in creative ways outside of that um, 7.30 to 3. So I think there, there could be, I mean, I could just be, you know, shooting no, rainbows, no. glitter, and, and unicorns at you right now. But <laughs> there could be an audience for that based on the side gig economy yeah. and where we are right now. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. And we're not we're not seeking 30 people. We're seeking right, right. You know, Two to four. Ideally four. Yeah. Right. And even some of the subs too, right? Yeah. Like that might yeah, want yeah. to like get into that seven. There are some parents who sub for us mm -hmm. at UES in particular who. Mm -hmm who sub for us every day. Yeah. I mean, that's what exactly. they do. Um, and, and so this might give them more permanency in that position and the opportunity for healthcare. I know if you're, if you're in the gig economy, the opportunity for healthcare is probably pretty big. Yeah. You're the, the chance of healthcare. So I think there is a small chance that we are competing I'll with apply. lots of different districts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm always looking for a so, looking for a so if they're not on the, if they're gonna be subs, um, and potentially look at becoming teachers and get licensure at some point or whatever. Would that create, is there any um, worry to think that they're not going to be in the contract, not going to be covered by the union, and they're just off their own? So that kind of creates that, would that create any tension? Because they're not on contract and they're not covered by those, you know, union protections and all that stuff, because they're just. I don't think the two around uh, future career goals. Okay. I don't think there's any conflict there. Okay. Um, or at least I can't see any. I can see only benefits there. Okay. Um, because they can use that experience as being hired by a school district and being in a school building every day as part of the review process for their experience. Um, which is something that licensing takes into consideration. Would the union think otherwise? No, I've talked to the union about okay. that, and they're this, and they're all for it. Okay, they're good. like, "Yep, go for it. Okay. Get as many as you can." <laughs> <laughs> and and the financial side of it, um, you taking the current rate and giving the salary, but then I, I think Mia mentioned that the health benefits and any other benefits are on top of it. Yeah. So that's subs don't get any of that. So that's an additional thing that you would need to right. cover. Right. Um, right. Right. And. That's not a small piece either, right? It's not a small piece. No, no. you're right. Um, and so I think that the finding the, that end amount that was quoted in your 
in the recommendation that I gave the board, the 160, 160. Some, um, that's, that would probably be what we actually average paying overall with the benefits packages on top. So if we hire somebody who is at, you know, doesn't have licensure and just want, you know, let's say a gig worker, right, who has no experience subbing for us but wants this and wants the health care, then they're getting the low end of the pay with the benefits on top of it, right? So that it's still within the range. I think it will all fall within the range. It may be more than that if we get lucky. Yeah. Is it one? 160 is the number you gave us, 160. Does that, so is it is it 130 already budgeted? And now we're talking about only 30 no, from the fund? No, 130 is budgeted for subs next year okay. without any kind of permanent sub. Okay. Oh, I see. So this is 160 additional. Potentially. Okay. Right, because we're likely going to spend more money than this 160 on subs. Right. Because the permanent sub, and even if we got one for every school, wouldn't cover every sub Respond right. Yeah, would right. fill every substitute position. Right. At, at, on any given day, okay. so especially on a Friday. Potentially, that one yeah. would go down because of we get lucky and we get three sub permanent subs. So that that one thirty would go down. Yeah, we um, would we would spend that faster than we typically do. We'd yeah. Spend yeah. that first, and yeah. then we would start kicking into the fund balance. Yeah, but you you're not thinking it's going to be two ninety. No. Um, it's no. going to be south of right because that one thirty will go down. Right. Um, Right, Some I think it will be south of the 160. Okay. Other questions? What do you, what would you like, do you, do you need a motion? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a okay. significant amount of money, so the board would have to approve this. Yeah, and you'd also, if, if we want to add 10 days, you'd have to approve 10 days, and my guess is, I would suggest we give Libby the option of offering, well, the offering it, but not mandating it, because I could see someone who's who's got a gig saying, no, I'd rather take those 10 days and, and work on my art. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I'm sorry. I, I would just say, let's have it be the expectation, you know, that this is what we're, right here we're saying a guarantee of 178 days. We would just say a guarantee of 188 days. This is the work. This is, yeah. this is the work. You're a teacher in our building all year long. This, this is the work. If you added on days, I would take out two of them because two of them are parent conference days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, my only thought is is if it's a struggle to get, I would rather have substitute coverage that the school needs than knock out a couple candidates and be in a situation like we are now because I'm, I'm not, I'm just not sure every person in the category that she said is interested, gonna be interested in this is going to want to sit through trainings. It, they, they may or they may not, but if it's if it's not a... We can put a stipulation that um, should you wish to partake in, in service professional development days, you'll be paid for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks like Jill. Was Jill? Yeah, that, that might make me feel better because I, I, I'd hate to defeat the purpose in part, which is to make sure that classrooms are covered so that teachers can take advantage of professional development. It sounds like that was one of the many reasons why we need substitutes, so I'd hate to defeat that purpose by requiring those same folks who are gonna cover those classes to go to those trainings. But I, I love the philosophy yeah. and I like that idea of having it be an option. Mm -hmm. Amanda? But those PD days that are in there are not, it's just if I wanna take some other PD opportunities, correct? Like not for the district's PD day. Right, so what I understand you're asking for is, for instance, the Martin Luther King Day, where we are working on, all the teachers are together, working on restorative justice and, and equity work and that kind of stuff, yeah. that we would want our any employee to be there. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think it's like, based on, Follow Merrick said it's like it's kind of developing that culture of like we're here together, especially like those specific trainings that have to do with some of the frameworks of the district around whether it's equity, restorative justice, uh, you know, students with disabilities, whether it's, it's all of this that if you're a sub, a sub, you know, you are having that same culture in your classroom for one day. 
like you kind of know what those frameworks are, which is what you use kind of like in those PD days that are district wide. So they have at least the framework for that, you know. So I I don't think it should be an option. I think yeah. it should be part of. Yeah, but are if, if but if you don't have these permanent subs, then you're getting subs in who are just getting called randomly, so you don't have that anyways, right? You have a permanent I mean, sub in each of the school buildings. Yeah, we're but not the, talking the about the other subs. The way they're doing subs right now, you don't have subs that are going to professional development no. training. That's, but yeah. that's yeah. not. But we but have I'm, a permanent person that's in the building doing random things, covering classrooms or things that they don't. Need. Yeah. So. I hear the concern, Jim. I just wonder how much anybody who would be seeking a job, like how much they would actually, you know, if what we put in the job description or whatever is 186 days, they probably are not listening to this debate we're having right now and going, oh, well, it could have been 178, so now I'm not going to apply. I don't know. It just feels like I, I, it doesn't seem like too much of a reason to, I, I don't want to be like, I'm, I don't, I'm not worried about it. It is a, it is a job seekers market right now. That yes. is true. Um, and it's kind of like, Somebody who somebody who's attracted to this position in the first place is somebody who's interested in working in a school, and we're just simply saying as the employer in this district, this is what the expectation is of, for working in our schools, and I'm all in favor of employee, employers setting the expectation that we should set. So, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, my thought hey, is that... Oh, sorry, Zach. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Zach. No, it's fine. Um, yeah, I would just um, sort of affirm like what Mia and Amanda have been saying, um, as well a lot of other people have mentioned. Like I know from a lot of personal experience, like with substitute teachers, that there are certain issues that they're not trained on or just certain like norms that they're not aware of. And that can be really uncomfortable as like as a student um, and I'm sure they could learn that within time within being in the building, but I think it would be a lot more comfortable um, for students if that was already a baseline. And if it's like eight extra days, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a, like a job market expert, um, but I think that, <laughs> um, I think that if they're already wanting to be in the building, I don't think uh, like eight days is going to be a lot more um, stress or setback I, I hear I hear everyone I just really want to reiterate the point that getting substitutes is really hard it's a big problem it, it's a hurdle um, this is a job that has a I think a slim demographic that's going to be interested and a lot of those people are going to have flexibility and even in your own job 10 extra days off can make a difference if if this is if this is a do I do this or do I not do this thing? I'm kind of confused. So, about, I'm kind of confused about how this would work if it's a permanent position. It's a salaried position, or it's yeah. not an hourly position, right? No, it's a, it would be salary. It'd if be, it's it'd a be salary an position, it, it would have a salary. In the case of forty thousand dollars, it's a uh, two hundred twenty-five dollars per day calculation uh -huh. with 178 and now all of a sudden if you're saying oh you can come 188 days but we will pay you forty two thousand dollars for those you know you know two thousand two hundred fifty dollars extra so forty two two fifty we'll pay but you don't have to come I don't, I'm, I'm confused about that um, if we're giving them the option well no I think what I, what I'm saying is what I, I would rather it not be an option that's that's my point so, so now we'll offer, say, $42,000 and say that you have to show up for these 188 days. Right, we, but they'll be saying 186, because two... 186, I mean, the calculation would change slightly, yeah. but, but that's the point is that we are now, we'll say that, hey, we'll pay you more, but we need those eight, six days more, eight days more from you. That, um, that's, that's the calculation, I'm, that's, yeah. That's what I'm advocating for. Okay. Okay, so it's, if the, the option, p optional pieces I, I was confused about is how would we say that we'll pay you more, but and you don't have to show up for these if you don't want no. to. No, so no. how it would work is they'd fill out a timesheet. So yes, it's salaried, like we're guaranteeing that much amount of money. However, you have to 
like with any kind of MOU like this, you'd have to track their days. Yeah. Right. And so. But it's not going to be the optional. We can't say that. Oh, for some people. No. If we were to make it, yeah. if we were to make it 184 days, let's say, and they had 10 sick days, um, and two personal days. I'm just throwing numbers out. I'm spitballing right now. Then and they didn't want to come to Martin Luther King Jr. in service. Mm -hmm. Um, then they would have to take a sick day. Or a person. Okay. They would have to use their leave time not yeah, to come to that day. Getting, yeah. yeah, that's what I was getting. It doesn't become the... Yeah, and what I'm suggesting is that you give them the option of attending those days, but then add it as like a per diem on, to, on top of it. So they get paid for the 176, and then if they want to do extra days, they could get paid mm -hmm. on top per of diem it. for yeah. that. Yeah. And, and my reasoning is, is, I mean, I agree with everything everyone has said. I just feel that this is a real need, and when you make the hurdle higher, you make the hurdle higher. I, I will make my last objection to that is like that it's when it comes to culture building and, and I tell you the experience of working with schools where there is a different tiers of people saying well I'm not gonna get paid and we had this conversation uh, with some of when I was part of the district equity committee and I was supporting and helping build a the in-service day, it was like there was like that that people were feeling like they were not included because they were not going to get paid and that there was no turnaround, right? Like, and so like there was not for, for the IAs. So that's changing, but then like you want to include, like if they're permanent for a year, then you want to make them part of the culture. So that's I think that it is important to give more like, yeah, you're part of this, even if you're not licensed. Well, if you're a, an every, you know, a now and then substitute now, you're taking a permanent sub position. I don't, that seems an awful lot making someone part of the culture in itself, as opposed to these things are available and, you, and they're haphazard. This is a guaranteed time. Personally, I am, I don't, I, I like the idea of giving people choices, not deciding for them what's best. Even though I understand in the long run, it may be the best thing for the, for the district. It also feels like telling people what's best for them. I like the idea of the choice, but. Yeah. I, I think it is a big, Thing to have somebody who's a permanent staff person be uh, integrated into the culture, and so it feels like the best one of the way one of the best ways to support them is to have them be participate in something like a professional development day and the you know the the rah rah day where they get to have breakfast with everybody and and those kinds of things. And to me, it doesn't come down. It's not so much a like, well, we know what's best for you, but more just like we as a as a district are acknowledging things that we've heard from students and from other teachers and things about how big of a deal this is, the culture and the, the being able to wrap around stu every single student with the support that they need around social, emotional, um, and behavioral learning. And that because of that, we're setting this expectation for anybody who's going to be a full-time staff member in our district because we want, not only do we, and we'll provide you that support. The, it's an expectation and it's a support to be part of um, these professional development days. Yeah. I'll just make one final point. Teachers right now are stressed because they don't have subs. They're covering, it's hard. It's hard on teachers, it's hard on principals, it's hard on administrators. I think anything we do to make it harder to bring subs into the building is not supporting our teachers. Even if we can make a good argument, which I think people have, that there's cultural reasons to do it, I think we should make it as easy as possible to hire subs next year. And that's why I think making it as flexible an option as we can makes sense. But if the board disagrees, the board disagrees. Libby, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm genuinely curious. Like, I feel like a lot of people would see that as a plus, right? Because that's something they could put on their resumes if they participate in these things. I'm wondering if that's actually like a, if we did consider that, if that would actually be a draw for some people. If I had my druthers, I'd make it optional. 
let's say you yeah. will be paid for in-service trainings that you attend. And maybe That's, all of them would. We don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. And I would say we should exclude anyone. I think we should just make it flexible so we have a higher pool so we can fill a very pressing need to support our teachers and our administrators. But, um, so the phrase, I a also, guarantee of I 178, also, doesn't say a maximum. It says at a minimum, yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. OK. Well, and that's not the MOU that was just written for the board. That's not the actual It's very MOU. official. <laughs> it's quite official. I try. That's very helpful. And, and, and I've said this before. I, when I was at the Agency of Education, I did get to see a few schools that had a full-time sub, and they were, they were the clutch. Everyone knew them. They knew the kids. They knew the staff. They kind of knew the style of the different teachers. So I think this is a fantastic model to, to try. And I, I'm hoping a place like Montpelier Roxbury will draw some really great people. Because it's kind of a neat idea. You know, if you're, if you're out of school and still trying to figure out where you want to go or what, what subject you want to teach or what age, this is another great opportunity. So I, I think offering it as an option is great because I think the vast majority, if not everyone, would probably take advantage of it, especially if they're going to get paid to go. Mm -hmm. Can we put a language in there that, that um, you know, this is what it is, and we highly um, recommend it or something, you. encourage yeah. you to, to uh, um, attend the in-service days and all that, and you'll get paid per diem for those, something like mm -hmm. that. So it's, yeah, your base salary is this, and you can make more, a little bit more, and we encourage you to do that, to, to attend that. We can certainly do that. I have a practical question. So you have a sub in a classroom that is having some conflicts. How are they, and this is a permanent sub that knows the kids, knows the classroom. Like, how are they being trained um, around some of all these overarching goals and that the district has? Um, that's not a simple question to answer because we don't have them currently. I also think that putting a whole lot of stock in one day of professional development or even six days of professional development, which will not be all the same, they will be on different topics, is putting way too much stock in those. So, um, so that's, uh, that's something. If a sub, if we were to hire permanent subs and they were having trouble in the classroom, most likely the trouble would be around classroom management. And the assistant principal and the principal would be working with them to help them with routines and coach them through it. Or the instructional coaches that we now have coming on board would be working with them around routines. The, the PLC, the professional learning communities, the first grade team would wrap their arms around the person to help with classroom management. Um, and we coach them through that. And going back to what I believe Brett said, or Sagey, one of the two, um, we'd probably be pretty particular as to which classrooms that sub would go into if they were really struggling with things like classroom management. Yeah. But I do want to state that like going to one day of in-service on restorative justice or something is not going to yeah, ingratiate them into the, like that, that takes lots of time um, over a course of years. I'm a little on the fence on this. I, I, on one side, I feel like I, if I was in charge, I would force everybody to go there and, and put them in the room. Um, but then I started thinking about my own job, and there's plenty of meetings I wish I could just skip. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not gonna be a willing participant and go there and engage and actually be present, then why not just leave and, and have that option? To, you know, not everyone's gonna really get things from these in-services. I would like to think that they would, but some people might just check out. Some people might just go there just to punch their card. Um, and the people that choose and opt in to go there are gonna be the ones that are gonna perhaps float to the top and be the better employees and be more engaging. And the ones that don't, not that it's a, a mark against them, but that's just, that's their attitude. They don't want to. They don't want to go there. And then why? You know, they're adults. You know, why force them to go there? And especially if it's going to be a hindrance to, to hiring a, a good sub, um, which is the most important thing in this part process, right? Mm -hmm. I'm also looking at that idea of that extra support that people are getting 
as a permanent stub, sub that they, if they were, if they were a current status quo stub today, sub today, a day to day, as a permanent sub, that is a lot of support and a lot of, a lot of opportunity to grow and whatever. And it is a pilot, and maybe we ask if we we get them or we ask all the subs what they think about this idea at the end of the pilot year or something like that and reconsider what it looks like um, if it becomes something that's folded into the budget, say, and not just a memorandum of understanding. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then this could theoretically become part of a future contract for budget cycle or knowing that it's hard to predict. But if this is a successful model and we find people to do it, these are a lot of ifs, then this could be part of how the district operates, that this is like a, mm -hmm. a regular setup. I think that's the other part that's just making me I want to make sure we're not creating a separate system that might have any more inequities than it already does to the contract. Because like maybe at some point if it has more benefit than someone who's under contract, I don't want to lose somebody and have them take this. I don't know if that would happen, but. No, we talked about that. We, um, our instructional assistants in particular, right? So, um, but we, were, we did that math in the last negotiating cycle with the instructional assistants because in that cycle, we added language around substitution, um, and so they get additional money on top of their typical paycheck if they are asked to cover a class. If instructional so it doesn't work out even. You know what I mean? Like this is not going to. Um, it could draw an instructional assistant who may not want to be an instructional assistant anymore. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is it's not monetarily better or worse than being an instructional assistant. Yeah. Are we making a motion? Yes. Uh, to approve Libby's recommendation for the um, permanent substitutes and um, change the um, language around days of work to be a guarantee of 186 days of paid work. Um, with the expectation that they attend in service. I second that motion. Discussion? Do we have a sense of the financial difference? Yeah, I could figure it out already. I watched them. <laughs> it, it's going to be, the high would be around $10,000 more. Okay. Thank you. Times 169. I would make the recommendation that it may not be 186 days, but that it would be less than that because some of those days are working with, you know, special educators working with classrooms. Like, some of the in-service days are not professional development. I it's, gotcha. It's very specific teacher collaboration about very specific children. Gotcha. That this position would not be a part of the discussion. So if you think about in-service days, it's probably, um, you know, you could think about it from an IA perspective. They have three additional days now. Now that we have the Yeah, after tonight, uh -huh. they have three uh -huh. additional, there are four additional days to their contract. And so maybe it's 182 days mm -hmm. instead. So that takes out the parent conferences. It takes out the, you know, Jim and I talking about very specific kids. It t you know, it takes mm -hmm. out those days. But there is still days of... Um, opportunity there. In addition, I think the most thing that, that the board members who have spoken so far in favor of adding on days are mostly concerned with equity, restorative justice practices, those kind of things. Those at, that professional development, with the exception of MLK Day, that is the one day that we have promised to focus on that, mm -hmm. in addition to the half days. So if somebody is a substitute in our school district for a, and we're paying them for a day, then they are staying for that full mm. day. Mm -hmm. So that's, that eliminates, like that's not an in-service day. True. That is a full day of work mm -hmm. for teachers and substitutes. So I, I would um, recommend 
that it's not that full time because it's putting way too much onus as to exactly what happened. I mean, there's some of that time during sure. service the teachers are putting their rooms together. Sure. You know, that's not a, they don't, permanent subs don't need to do, be there for that. Sure. We don't need to pay them for that. So you're saying the adjustment would be 182? 180, 182. 180, yeah. So, I'm, I'm good with amending it so that it's not actually a number to give you the flexibility of meeting what you just described and simply saying a guarantee of 180, 78 days of paid work, including the expectation that they intend, attend in service, it, the professional development dates. Professional development, yeah. Yeah. So what we're really talking about here is a difference of maybe two or four yeah. days. Mm -hmm. Four at the most. Four, so it's 182 instead of 178, which, sorry, Merrick, I see you have your hand up. I just want to point out, is also reducing potentially the height of the hurdle that Jim is concerned about. Yes. <laughs> Wait, so when you say expectation, you do mean like the right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Just, My okay. motion is that it is not optional. Okay. I second that. Further discussion? One more question. Um, so if we approve this right now as is, it's required to do the in-service, and the perfect candidate comes along and applies, interviews, and has a really compelling reason to not attend the in-service, is there any wiggle room there as far as negotiations, or is it just completely off? The not board? with the current motion, no. Okay. Well, the current motion, my answer would be you'd have to take your sick time or personal time. Right. right. Yeah. Which any teacher, that's the right. case for any yeah. teacher if they, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Which they have 10 days of right. in this, according to this MOU. Yeah. I move that Mia's motion be amended to make all of the in-service time be at the choice of the candidate, if that's such a motion. Is that a motion? Uh, uh, can you amend, amend, amend our amend motion? Amend, amend, yeah. amend, yeah. amend yeah. to a motion. <laughs> This is purely for show. I'm not. <laughs> 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 I'm crying. There's a I, I appreciate the honesty. You have to your, raise your own motion. motion? Yeah, I don't know. I think you can only amend your own motion. Yeah. Yeah. So you would make a secondary motion, I believe. You would make a separate motion. Yes. Can there be two uh, motions on the table? There can be two motions, and we okay. vote but on one or the other. Can you just vote on one and then? Or well, I guess if there are two, two motions, motions. there will so, be... So, yeah. Rhett, say, say more. It is, I mean, get, regardless of what I just said, it is optional for them to attend in that, as Sagey just pointed out, they could say, I'm sorry, I am incredibly busy on Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. I'm taking a leave. I'm taking one of my paid days. Yeah. Safe days. I mean, they could also get COVID in, you know, two weeks and not have the option anymore. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's a tough one. I don't know. So, what the motion you proposed, that was not saying a set amount of days. I was giving Libby the, like, basically authority to say which days, right? Yeah, I took the number out because okay. I wanted to make sure, because Libby made the excellent point that they don't need to be there for teacher conferences. They don't need to be there to set up their classrooms. So, it's, it's, we know that it's 178 days because that's the days that the students are in school. And then plus the expectation of whatever the days that are that are district-wide professional development days. My, my second question is, do we know what other schools are doing are, with their permanent subs? Do they have to go to the instructions? Or? I don't know what everybody's doing. I reached out to Julie Regenbold, who's up at Mrs. Scoy um, Valley, and they're just making it student days. They're doing what? Student days. Yeah. So they are required there? Or? For student days only, oh, so okay. 178, or whatever their student day number is. But I didn't reach out to everybody. Is it possible to make a second motion so that there becomes, how does this work? You can, you can you announce your this? intent to make a second motion, then we can take a vote, and then we'll know your motion is coming if, if the first vote doesn't pass. Right. So, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm sorry, we're still discussing, so I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards giving the option. Um, it just feels like it's, we, we will, 
not only they will have options, but we will have more options and more flexibility um, than just locking it and saying that. So, I don't know. Yeah. Yes. I just feel like it could be up to the whoever's doing the hiring to communicate how it's going to go and then decide on it, I guess. I don't know. Instead of sort of, we don't even know, we don't even have a number of days or, nece or the, we're, we're sort of concept of professional development doesn't have any clear number of days, especially for this role. We're not sure exactly how they're all going to play out next year. They didn't all play out this year the way they had been planned last year. And so it's, I don't know, it feels... Yeah, to me, there are a lot of unknowns um, that we can be... I, I, it just feels like the more unknowns we have, the more flexibility we need to have. And can we split Can I? Can I? Yeah. Because, like, we're just, can we just split it? One, one motion to, like, approve the two four permanent positions in each of the buildings and then another motion to approve the MIA part of adding this professional development days and then you just vote yes or no and that's it instead of like putting it all together. Is that like for me, like I will I really feel strongly that they should take those PD days, especially MLK Day and all those like framework PD days. So like I don't want to have to vote no on the whole thing, uh, but I feel strongly about that. So, like, if you guys don't, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But I want to be able to have the option to approve the four permanent positions and then have the option to say no. I think it's a cultural like thing for every staff member should be talking about microaggressions, including sub permanent subs that are going to be here. Every you know, including a bus person like. That's just part of the work that we need to do. So 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 we can do that. Mia would have to pull right. her initial motion and then offer and then someone else would have to offer that motion and then we could do two motions. Or I think another way to handle it would be to just vote on this one. If it doesn't pass, then we yeah. make another motion that is probably yeah. included. The, the as question for Armando though is would you vote would you vote well, I guess you could be on record voting for one and then not for the other. It's I would to be vote clear, for though, Mia's motion right yeah, now yeah. as is, yes. To be clear, though, the board doesn't decide what we do on those days. Exactly. Oh, yes. correct. Yes. Right? yes. So yes. I hear very clearly um, an expectation of what those days will be, and they may not be that, that, yep. that focused. So, um, so, and, I, and again, I want to reiterate that two days of professional learning or three days or four days does not change behavior. Right? Yep. So no, I, I yeah. totally agree with you, Libby. It, it is also, though, like not doing, it feels like not setting that expect. It, there's more about it. It feels to me about like we're setting an expectation that this is what it is to be a full-time teacher in our buildings. Um, but you're absolutely right that, you know, being yeah, being at a that. training doesn't yeah. do, do, does not uh, the change make the yeah. workshop the work is not the workshop as right. Yeah. Right. one of my favorite trainers yeah. and, and, and while these people will be full time in the building the, the purpose is for them to play the yeah. role of substitutes for full time teachers right now who are absolutely out of their minds because of the lack of substitutes and need that support so getting them that support to our full time teachers to me is the priority and making that as easy as possible as a priority. Yeah, and that's yeah. how we support our teachers, and sometimes it's not perfect. I think the point that you and I disagree on, Jim, is that is the hurdle. You see it as a bigger hurdle than I do to say this is a requirement of the job. So I think I, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not disagreeing yeah. that we need to support our teachers and that yeah. we need this. I think this detail here of what of, of what of the size of the hurdle is where we disagree. Yeah, no, and I, I agree with that, but I think I don't know. You, so. yeah. Anyhow, um, should we vote on Mia's, Mia's motion? Right. So Reg didn't formally make a motion, correct? Well, let's vote on it. Was it was if you did, it wasn't well. seconded. So what do we have to do? Can, can we have two motions on the table? So theoretically, you made a second amendment, right? Although you didn't formally to go from the 186 to the 182? Yes. Okay. 
Oh, there was no 182, right? The days were pulled out. I have, thank you, thank that's you for the yeah. clarification. Okay. I have removed the number of days, other than the 178 that's in Libby's recommendation. Okay. But then. But I have, yes, amended my motion. Okay. But then if you, I'm sorry, <laughs> if you pulled the days, the, 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 the motion would be to give Libby the authority to figure out how many days, uh, as long as the professional development days are included, is that? Okay. Do you want to just for professional development is okay. Do you want to restate a fresh I'd motion? To. I'd love okay. to. Um, I move to approve Libby's recommendation for hiring permanent substitutes with the addition of setting an expectation of attending district wide professional development days. I second that motion. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. So how many, what is that? I think we're tied. Three, four. All the ayes. Three, three, three. Well, three, three. Half. You're a half. <laughs> well. A half right. There's nothing in Jill's book that says you can be a half. I, 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 I haven't read Jill's book, but I'm pretty certain of that. So I can be a one, but you, you guys are So the motion two. does not pass. Yeah. Well, uh, well, no, it does. No, it does. It does. Okay. Because it's three against two and a half, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's and I, I, I can vote to break a tie, which I'm going to. But it's to. not a tie. I think I can vote. I, mean, I, don't, can I, I don't believe you can be a half vote. So but it's two against If everyone's three. worth two votes and I'm worth one vote. Oh, yeah. that's what it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So it's sorry. just a lot of oh, votes. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's not a half vote. I'm sorry. I forgot about that. Part of the agreement for the merger. Yeah. I had forgotten about that, right? Five against six. You are, a whole person. So, you are a whole person to me. I know. But can so the question it? is, can I vote? Yeah. Yeah. If not, there's no I think I can vote if it's decisive. Why? Because well, I'm an elected member of the board, yeah. Yeah. and the chair usually doesn't vote unless the vote's needed decisive. to make it decisive. Yeah. I will vote no. Okay. Yeah. We can double check that, but... So the motion does not pass. So then we would need another motion. Yes. I will make another motion. I will make a motion, two motions. One is to approve the four permanent positions. Well, you have to make one at a time. Just one okay, at a time. Okay, so I'm making two motions, one at a time. The first motion is that we approve four permanent sub positions, one for each school district. For each school building. For each school building, sorry. <laughs> school building. Um, yeah, that's one. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so that motion passes. So the recommendation passes. Not a recommendation, a motion. Right. <laughs> to accept the recommendation. <laughs> My motion to include four permanent subs, one on each school district. And my second motion I'm making is that we add professional development district wide professional development days to the permanent sub MOUs. Three days, maybe, what you said? I was just counting in my head, okay. sorry. Let me pull up the calendar. Because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, okay, so next year, next school year, the, um, there's one district day in August. There's an in-service day in October, but that is def that is typically a building-based day. There's a parent conference in, or in October. Martin Luther King Day is a district-wide day. Um, there's parent conferences in March. And then the early releases are district-wide. So any early releases is not covered under this. Those are it's included. not considered an in-service day. It's, a, it's just a full day of work. 
Um, so that equals, if I'm, as I'm looking at the calendar very quickly, it equals two days. It equals two days of district-wide district -wide work and three days of building-based work. Building-based work typically has teachers working in teams in their PLC on the school improvement plan around student academic data or social emotional learning data. But that's not a promise. I don't make those days. So that's the principal's discretion. That whole thing is about two days. Mm -hmm. Did we have a second to the motion? So the board feels a little bit better about that only two days, is that there are, we added several more early releases next year. We added like three more early releases next year to have more time to work in, as a district faculty. I'm sure how parents are gonna feel about this. Yeah, I still feel really the option to, having the option for Libby or other administration to say, hey, we really encourage you to come for this or whatever, and then we'll get paid. Um, even though I know it's two days, it's at the beginning, people are going to see that $42,000 and then go from there. I, I would hate for us to preclude them from participating, and I'm worried if we don't yeah. address that, we've actually removed that. I would see it as a perk that they would get to participate in these as paid days, and I don't want to uh -huh. preclude that from happening. If these substitutes do want to participate. So I'm worried that if we don't address that, we've actually... Sorry, I thought that was the, the thing that if they do participate, they get more money um, mm -hmm. on top of the, the, the salary. Is that so, assumed under... Yeah. Okay. I, think, I, I thought that was... Maybe that I was right. right. No, that idea that we yeah, paid for that time. That would be the, the, the pitch to whoever is yeah. candidate is applying that, hey, this is the $40,000, $42,000 the salary, and you know, we have in-service days that, that you can attend and we'll pay you for those. As, as I, I think we'd even encourage them. Say, we'd love to have you oh, come. Yeah, yeah, we'd yeah. love to have you come. Um, but, you know, if you want to take those days off, it won't count against your leave, and, but you won't get paid for it. But that also gives the principals or yeah. administration the, the, the flexibility that, oh, we'd like, even though we had said that the two service days, we would like you to attend this third one, because it's really going to be benefiting all of us, so and you're going to get paid for that. So those those will be eight, right? If they were. Yeah, to, that could be you know in in administration's purview of offering the whatever extra days that they want to offer. So we don't lock them into just two days or one day. Did we have a second to Amanda's second motion? I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? It's basically we had the same thing Mia presented, but in two parts. Could you restate it one more time? I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, make a motion to add professional days. Require professional day professional development days for the permanent sub positions. Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. And so who who are the eyes and the nays? I think it's three, two. I only heard two, you. two voices. Uh, yes, yeah, two and then three gotcha. without Jim. Right, so I I don't know. And I looked it up. I, I can, the chair in 412, the chair can vote always. Um, I'd like to make a motion to make sure that we offer and encourage, but make it voluntary for permanent substitutes to attend all professional development opportunities. And pay them for it. And pay them for it. Yeah, 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 would you include that in your motion? Well, I'm asking, I was asking the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, yeah. I want, if, if, I, if I come in, you know, if I'm going to come in, I should get paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the same way as everyone else. Yeah. But 
maybe I, have, I feel really crappy and I don't want to. You know, I don't know. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Is Anna the one keeping track of Lee's <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. That's uh, also Jill. <laughs> No, oh, she's got a thumbs up, Mammy. She's got a thumbs up. She's good to go. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 How many eyes were there? I think all. Everyone? Okay. Oh, yeah. Eyes have it. Wow, it's the most contentious vote I've ever had <laughs> in seven years on the board. Good discussion. Oh, good, good discussion. Good discussion. Yeah, it's definitely good discussion. Good result. No, and, and thanks for, um, we, those days would not have even come up as an option if, if it wasn't brought up, so. Yeah. Um, so thank Let's you for that. Cross right. our fingers that we find people now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are on to board discussion um, facilities committee. I don't know who from the facilities committee Wants to give an update? I missed the last one, just okay. as I missed the last board meeting. And Kristen is our very capable chair who does our minutes and things like that. So I don't have any updates. Um, Do we want to reschedule for when Kristen can make it? Why don't we do that? Because I yeah, would... and there were meeting minutes too. So there's a little yeah. You know, the the yes. building tours have continued. I think there's maybe one more. Yeah, MSMS is in two weeks. Thank you. Oh, it's Emma's not here either. I might be able to go yeah. to that one. No, it'd be great to hear where things are with the um, net zero study, too. Um, or at least thinking about getting, getting that mm -hmm. going. Um, OK, so we can, uh, we'll reschedule that soon. Uh, and then retreat planning with the draft agenda, I've heard. Um, from a couple of you, um, Amanda can elaborate more, but she had some great suggestions about maybe kind of doing the brainstorming around uh, committees, just uh, and having some report out from the committees about their work plans and how the work and you know discussing how the work plans merge. Um, also, Amanda talked about you know what horizon do we want to look at on. Uh, she suggested a two-year horizon uh, or at least a two-year far look out, maybe a year look out with a little more specifics um, mm. just to give more direction and also uh, you know when, when the board turns over there's there's a bit of a game plan already um, both of which I thought made sense um, uh, Mia had a question about ground rules and parameters and talking about that tonight which I think we could I was just kind of thinking of you know something like the you know, the like respect ground rules, um, you know, chair, take responsibility for what you say, don't blame others, uh, use empathetic listening, be sensitive to differences in communication styles, um, you make sure you ponder what you hear and feel before you speak, um, examine your assumptions and perceptions, keep confidentiality, which we can't do because it's a public meeting, um, and obviously, you know, trust greater truth comes with diverse perspectives. Uh, and then some others that I think are good ones, you know, come prepared, be present, um, start positively, uh, follow the agenda, um, create a collusive environment, make space and take space, uh, be solution focused, you know, assume positive or good intent. Um, and yeah, would love other suggestions about things, but you know, just kind of agreeing on, which I think we'd kind of try to do anyways. Um, and then I think Livy had some suggestions about some kind of protocols we can use to, um, you know, like sticky boards and whatnot to, you know, organize, um, you know, the brainstorms. So it's, uh, it's done in a way where we kind of, you know, go into small groups, you know, probably by committee come back, you know, put our stickies on a board and then, you know, discuss priorities. Um, you know, and then other things to think about, obviously we've got some things that are going to kind of, you know, come into the stream at different times, you know, the visioning process could, is going to come in in August, so we can, you know, sketch out a plan in June and then kind of 
you know, see how that looks in the overlay of what comes out of the visioning committee. Um, hopefully we'll have a good sample of our climate survey responses that we can also, um, you know, integrate into that discussion on the retreat to see what themes are coming up from, uh, you know, the, the faculty and staff and, and employees at the, at the schools. Um, and then, you know, every time you make a plan, things pop up as we know, especially as we've known for the last couple of years. So, um, you know, those things as well. Um, yeah, so I just love thoughts on my little uh, kind of dump of what I've heard and, you know, additional thoughts uh, and, um, you know, kind of comments on Libby's agenda. Um, and then in terms of, I asked for some process examples uh, and Mia came up with two good ones, one which I had already thought of, which was, you know, the process around the track. And the other one, uh, remind me of, the, it was the, the creation and rollout of the policy review tool. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I'll just open it up for, uh, for thoughts and comments on the agenda. And, um, and we can also, you know, kind of continue to do this by email and send out a, a revised agenda, but yeah, you know, this is probably the last time we'll be together as a as a group. Amanda, can, can I ask first, just for my own knowledge, how many board members were here for the equity policy? Just because of the way the protocol I've designed, no, no, not no, the equity policy, the equity, the tool, the rubric. Just because the policy or the way the format I'm thinking about right now, you need a history. Yeah. But, do you know what I mean? You need yeah. Some experience with it. So I'm just curious if there are board members who are not here for that. I think maybe Sagey. Just Sagey. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we could give you Wait, some background or someone. Yeah. Yeah. Amanda. Uh, um, so I'm like thinking like timeline, like walking backwards from like when budget passes, like all those little things that so I envision like I'm like a vision. <laughs> I'm like a, I need things in writing. So like being a timeline like okay we're right now in in june we usually have the retreat this month what happens then and like kind of that you know election time when board members shift like what are the things that we need in terms of like the board pocket that the equity committee is built in right now and like what the students are bringing so like being able to kind of have that as like okay this is what happens and here's like the two years and then being able to do some of that work around like the committees and like the work plan of like what, what it will look like. And I think for, for Libby's activity, it's like a really important to have some grounding questions that we can come prepared for beforehand. Mm -hmm. So not just together, but like that we actually do our homework before like our thinking and come prepare to like actually get it done. So it's like, those four hours to like make it really rich about work that the committees are already doing. And like we have the climate survey like to inform some of that and some like summaries of the vision committee and what's happening and just like, so that we're there with things that tangible that we're doing. I would point out that you have four hours. Yep. And you've named about eight to 12 hours of work. So, so I think that uh, the board should prioritize which, what it is you want to talk about. Wait, Amanda, I have a clarifying question. Yeah. We were just talking about that timeline, this, the, this, yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. doing this. Were you saying it would be helpful to have that written down as a grounding, like we'd have it to look at as a, as a piece of information for the discussions that we have. Exactly. So that we know, I, so if I'm following your line yeah. of thinking, if we know, hey, there's all this work that happens to make the budget happen. We shouldn't really plan to do a whole lot of other work as a board. Maybe committees could, but during that two month period or whatever. Okay, so, so seeing that as a visual to in, help inform our conversation. Yeah, I just, I, and like a lot of what we did in the last retreat, it was like kind of just left there, right? Like last year we did that retreat and then it's like, we, I don't want that to happen again. Yeah. So it's like time to like come prepare and be able to have some tangible. I think we have a great opportunity because we are all in different committees that touch in all of that. 
like we're already doing the work. I mean, I'm in the policy committee and the equity committee and the, like we meet a lot. <laughs> we're doing a lot of work. So I want everybody to know how we're working. And I also want to make sure that we're getting all of us in the same page about what that work could look like um, in the next year or two, right? Like, so I think, I think it's really important. I, I just, <clears throat> I get anxious when we don't have tangible things at the end of four hours of work. And then we also have the two hours in June 15, so it's yeah. really six hours. Yeah, to synthesize. To synthesize and get, to get there. Okay. Yeah. I'll be quick. I really like the idea of taking the time to go through our processes. I think that's really important. I'm glad that's in here. And forgive me, I, were we not going to get any update on the visioning committee, or did we decide that's too much and it wouldn't be, it'd be premature? We're moving that to August. OK. Yeah. Thank you. All uh, right. Um, yeah, I just copied this. It, well, the warning says Wednesday, June 13th. It's Monday, right? Yeah, yeah. Monday. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, is it possible for the committees to put to to it? The com each committee may have an idea of what their sort of plan might look like for the year, or is it possible for? I mean, I know me has done an awesome job with the superintendent evaluation committee, kind of adjusting that plan. And I don't want to ask something that's not uh, doable between now and the 13th. But is it possible to have time for each committee to say what their goals are and the, the sort of frames, just to take time for that? And then maybe we really take a really defined time for each committee and then greater board or mm -hmm. something. Like somehow to limit it so that there's a way to acknowledge some of the work and some of the changes and some of the adjustments without spending a lot of time debating what they should, that should look like. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how we would offer feedback to those processes if we really define that time. But maybe a way, because I'm really interested in, I want to know how each committee is going to improve their work and what they're doing. I think everybody's trying to. But I really am interested in as much time as a whole group um, mm -hmm. with this sort of building, uh, the culture building part that I hope that um, I heard was part of the last one. Maybe it's hopefully it will be part of this one. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I I am in agreement on the the gen basic idea. I want to make sure that we're using language that we all understand to be the same thing because I think there's a, there is a big difference between coming with some goals or ideas of goals and coming with a plan. And in fact, let's set, let's set some goals before we make the plan. So I wouldn't want to expect any committee to come to the retreat with a plan yet because we don't know what the goals are. So I, I, so I just want to make sure that we're just saying like using the same language and sort of like the, being on the same page. And I think that it's, it's both ambitious and pretty realistic for us to expect that we could leave Monday with a set, with the, with the board having named a set of goals, but maybe not yet have a plan exactly for them, but then maybe that's what happened on Wednesday. Or maybe that's something that we say, okay, that's something we're going to delegate to somebody to draft up and bring back to a, a future board meeting so we can land a plan at a future date. Um, so anyway, I just want to make sure we're all talking about the same thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's super helpful. And I think like goals, priorities, with the idea that we can maybe start to think about a plan, but we're certainly not going to put together a plan. So. And I think for the sake of expediency, maybe it'd be like a like a committee comment, like a public comment. The committee's going to speak. We're not meant to engage in discussion. But we're going to hear and write notes and you can circle back to them. But that would make sure we don't get stuck down a rabbit hole or too many leads in a certain topic or certain committee. And, and, um, may, and maybe to make it even more specific, we could ask, say, each committee's that our, our task between now and then is, as a committee, come up with that sort of vision. Like, what's our pie in the sky of what the district could achieve at the end of, we're saying, two years out? And that's what the committee, maybe we would give some kind of context, like here's what we've been working on, et cetera. But really, this is our, almost like our proposal 
to the board just to get it to keep us kind of focused and that would give us the 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 um, fodder or the ideas with with which to work to come up with what the actual the goals then are of for the for the district for the for the board the full board uh, Jill I was I was gonna say I I, I like that because I don't want to spend the whole retreat going through the, you know, committee accomplishments or, com you know, that that yeah. doesn't seem like a good use of our sure. short time. And also to echo Amanda's point about doing work ahead of time, like I'm guilty of it as anybody to show, show up at a major meeting like this where we're supposed to come up with these things having done very little, like, thinking about it. So I think we should maybe agree that we're at least on our own, we near, we're going to come to the meeting with our ideas of some of the processes we went through and our ideas of possible priorities and goals, and then the committees are the means to the end, right? They're a method for achieving yeah. our priorities and goals. And, yeah. yeah. And they contribute to them with the ideas that come from the committees. It's like a... Right, it's like, that's true. Yeah. Yes. Works together that way. I have a different question, but yeah. maybe we're still on this. Amanda? I'm just like, I'm thinking of the policy committee, like, in terms of goals versus work plan. You know, like, just like thinking, you know, we, we have, like, here are some of the policies we're working on the next year. Like, so it's that, like, would that be a different conversation? I this is just my opinion, but I think there is work that committees do that aren't, that are not like completely in line with maybe a, a goal that we would set as a board. So, mm -hmm. and my example for that with the equity committee would be maybe the, the new board member packet. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have to have it be a board yeah. goal that yeah. by the end of 2024 there is a board member, new board member packet or 2023 or whatever, mm -hmm. but the equity committee could still work on that. Yeah. I don't know, did that answer your question? That's just my opinion. I don't know if I even answered your question. We'll talk about it in the retreat. <laughs> well, I just, I, I think there's like separate committees will have different ideas of what, like the infrastructure committees that have like a different role, right? Like that they're looking at it yeah. specifically in terms of what the vision community is like different. So, it, yeah. So I think like we just need to design and like be able to think about like, just like, okay, how cohesive each of the committees become the board, right? Like, I think some of it is the challenge of committees doing their own thing, and then, like, us coming to the board meeting and being like, okay, we're voting on that particular thing. So instead of, like, being like, we understand what each committee is doing in a way. Yeah. We understand the processes that happen with the financial committee and, like, what happens the, when we don't look at all. Yeah, no, I agree. I think report outs is not a good use of time. I think one thing that I think is important is getting kind of like a shared sense of where like, you know, the three, you know, I'm just going to use three because it's a common number, you know, the three goals and priorities the board wants to set over like a two-year horizon. And then a sense of, you know, do the committees have goals and priorities or are they just do Because, you know, the more we can kind of get the committee's work to align with those bigger goals, so it's all pointing in, in the right direction with the idea that there's going to be some work that might either just need to get done mm -hmm. or, you know, be aligned with those goals but not in the, you know, sexiest of ways. Um, you know, like the board member packet, I think, could align with certain goals. It's also something that needs to get done, but, you know, it could just align with the idea of it, it could be kind of a broader equity thing of, you know, making sure that board members are are onboarded properly and, and that we've got, you know, information accessible in, in one place, et cetera. Um, so I wonder if, if maybe one thing we do is have the committees just be prepared to kind of share what, not their work plan or what they've been doing, but kind of why they're doing it, like mm -hmm. what they're working towards. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what is their work trying to achieve without spending 15 minutes talking about what that work is. Yeah. And just have like three to five minutes per committee. Like a and then do we have a rain session of like ideas for those committees just like to put out there? Like, like 
I wonder if we kind of do that so that we get a sense of where the committees think they're going, and then we kind of brainstorm where the board should be going, and then we kind of sit back and we say, okay, or where the committees think they're going, where the board thinks the board should be going, and and you know, where do those align and, and where do those not align, and, and do we have do we have a shared sense of goals, and are the committees working on things that that align with those goals? Am I going down a rabbit hole? I think you have, in my mind, you have it backwards. The board should be creating the priorities and goals, and the committees should be working towards those. No, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I'm Sorry. saying, but let's but let's get a sense of where the committees think they're going, and then let's get a sense of where the board thinks they're going, and then then let's see if it all makes sense, and. So the committees can start thinking about like, oh, we're we're going off this way, we should be going that way. So my question would be I think I've, I've lost my is it, <laughs> <laughs> I think you I think the board still needs to prioritize the time a little bit more. So yes. is the priority checking process? Is the priority creating a board work plan? Is the priority committee work? Um, those are the three biggies I've heard. Is it work plan or goal setting? We had work plan down just from the discussion before. Yeah. So it's it's kind of both. It's create. Right now I have it as uh, brainstorm 2023-2024 work plan, or that's the wrong years actually. 2022 yeah. to 2024 yeah. work plan, create board priorities and goals. On. Which are, I argue we're not going to be able to do in four hours, but we no. could get a baseline of where we're going so the committees can start thinking of some work plans that's going to get us there and then always coming back here to this, which is why I was like thinking like if we have kind of like that timeline vision, like we could, we could have some goals around. So give you an example. If we have the budget, budget ends in January. Yeah. And then we work back backwards for August. There are some uh, specific things that we have been saying that we need to do to get to a budget conversation that is more inclusive. So like, what are those things? What are, the, what are that, what is that goal? And then how, how does it relate? Do we need to form another committee that's like supporting the finance, just, just thinking. So I think that it's important to like, we're not going to be able to do our work plan in those four hours, but. But just to take that example a little further, in my mind what we could do is come to an agreement as a board that one of our priorities for the year is to run the budget process in a more inclusive way than we have in the past. That's something we could through discussion, I'm not saying that is a decision we would make, but it's an example of a decision we could make through discussion at the retreat. Yeah. Yeah, so my thought over here, and also with time priorities, we should probably prioritize setting priorities and goals. And then with the idea that we can start putting work plans together in later meetings and at the committee level. With the idea that committee work plans would start, would structure themselves around those priorities and goals. Um, that's what I would say too. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think the, what I would add to that is what committees could do to contribute to that discussion, like the pre-work committees could do to inform that discussion would be, hey, based on what we have been doing, what are some ideas that we have for goals the board could be setting for 2022 to 2024? And that would give some focus to, it, rather than us just spending, you know, spending committee time reporting out, yeah. it would actually be like, that's the purpose of committees talking or like sharing. Yeah. Not that we have to have committees sharing just for the sake of it, but it feels like that's a valuable um, set of information given that the committees cover different aspects of what the board cares about. Okay. I think I'm hearing relative <laughs> coherence. So do, does the board want to work on the process check? I, I would love to, if we can, 
And it feels like we could do both. Yeah. And maybe we just pick one process. Maybe we swap them too. I Again, I have a prop protocol where you can work on three at a time, but you're not actually di like everybody's not diving into. Three gotcha. At a time. Do you okay. know what I mean? Is that the word cafe thing? Yeah. The okay. Word cafe. I think it's important because I think we're a very new board. I know it probably doesn't feel like it, and you're not particularly new, but I still feel even two and a half years in. Newish. New. And so I think we've learned a few lessons and learned a few things where we would like to all kind of get our bearings of ground rules and sort of processes, and that it might seem rudimentary, but I think it would be really nice to make space so that going forward, we've kind of all reached an understanding about how we want to make those decisions, or at least in the best case scenario. But maybe it's a swap. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's the priorities and goals first, and then time allowing we get into the processes if we're worried we're going to lose time. But I'd like to do both. I'd like to do both, too. Um, I think that's right. Swap. 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 OK. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what are we swapping? Just having the process first, and, first the and then doing some process. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, okay. part. and then just so everybody knows too, we'll get lunch at noon. So Oh, that's one of my questions. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yes, we'll adjourn at noon, but then I hope we'll you will stay so. for lunch together Great. as well. I was gonna say you're more welcome to stay till five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it might actually be better to continue a process discussion over lunch than a substantive one. Or we could. It's culture talk. building, Jim. Gotta yes. eat. It is. Yeah. Bring it together. I get hangry. We have those hours in the, but yeah, we. All right. Anything else about the retreat? And feel free to keep bouncing ideas by email, especially about process examples and like, like be worth exploring. The only question I have about the climate survey is do do we want to have an executive session around that? Or we not? No? Okay. We can. We cannot? There's no reason to have an executive okay. session around the climate survey that would fit in the yeah, okay. reasons for executive session. Unless it's a evaluation process. Okay. So I so that's one thing that we should add in there, maybe before goals, right? Like we look at the climate survey, and then we work on the goals, and that. What? Well, and, and we, as we talked about the equity committee meeting this morning, we could have that for the board to see before Monday morning. So they, that could be part of what the board, mm -hmm. as individual board members, we spend some time digesting the climate survey results. Um, before 8 a.m. Monday morning, the 13th. So how much time would you like to add to the agenda for the climate survey? Do we need to add time in the agenda? It can be... Sounds like pre-reading? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's oh, what okay. I was thinking. Yeah, that's that's what, that would, discussion yeah. time around that. Yeah, that would kind of inform the, you know, what each board member is bringing yeah. to the board's discussion, uh, that may. But that's it, my hope. Yeah, so, so it's okay. a pre-reading uh, is what yeah. I was thinking. Mandatory, not option. Yeah. <laughs> Too soon. You don't get paid for it. No, 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 you're maxed out at your $1,000 for the year of safety. Yeah, I thought it was $1,500. So you'll want to get that <laughs> to us um, by, this is a Monday meeting, yeah? Yeah. So Anna will probably get this out on Thursday or Friday next week, so. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys want me to grab um, some coffee and pastries from Capital Grounds or something? Would that be? We've got it covered. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Coffee. I need it. <laughs> right. Uh, is Merrick. The, is the board retreat Monday? Yes. Next, the 13th. Okay. Not the 6th. Yes. And me and Zach are allowed to come? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you need a note? Do you know? Do you need a note? Probably not. Yeah. Okay. I'll just let them know. You just let me know if you need a note. Uh, I think speaking of executive session, um, I think that is what is next. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. And 
provision 10, security or emerging response measures, the disclosure of which could jeopardize public safety. Um, someone want to make a motion on those grounds? I move that we enter executive session on safety grounds. Just summarizing. No. Security and safety grounds. Second. Second. Just so the public knows, that means that we're not talking about any sort of imminent threat. We're just talking about general security measures that um, for obvious reasons need to be not public. Gotcha. So.